Hello everyone, it's Bonita from Pennies to Dollars and welcome back to my channel and welcome to all the new viewers. Today we're going to talk about taking back control of our finances. Sometimes it can feel like they are out of control and like we're really not given any choices on what we can do. Sometimes we feel like those choices are already made for us when we get our paycheck. So if you are new to frugal living or if you are seasoned in frugal living, this video is for you. Being frugal is not a get rich fast method. We all know that being frugal is more like a savings account where you're building upon your security so that it is there for you when you need it. It's adding to those skills so that you can add more skills little by little to make your life less expensive. I believe in adding frugal ideas along the way that add up to more money, less waste, more creativity, more willingness to change what we have always done, more security, less emergencies that happen that you cannot afford, more enjoyment out of your life, less worry, less stress, less sleepless nights because you're worried about how you're going to pay for gas to get to work tomorrow. I've worked with people that have said, I don't have gas money to get to work tomorrow and I need to work. That is a huge stressor because you need one to be able to earn money. Many people end up with more month than money. Sometimes it's an income problem and sometimes it is a spending problem or sometimes it's just a issue with we don't want to change the way we're doing things. If you cannot make it paycheck to paycheck, let's talk about some ways that maybe you can strategize to change that situation. So if you're trying to save money and live more frugally, the first thing we have to do is take back some control to our decision making. There's lots of things beyond our control, but there's a lot of things that are within our control. So try to look at what is in our control or maybe even look at what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and look at a different way of doing those same things. Try to look for frugal challenges. For instance, if you have green peppers that are going bad in your fridge regularly, and maybe you're throwing out half of a green pepper, maybe think about freezing that green pepper. I have a friend the other day that told me she freezes green peppers, whole green peppers. Now I dice them and put them in a freezer bag to keep from throwing things out. And I've saved so much money by just switching that one thing. But she doesn't take the time to chop them up. She freezes them whole and then just lets them run under warm water to thaw them so she can use them in her dishes. So see, some of these things just take a little bit more effort on our part to think about how we can do it differently. How many of us have spent a lot of time throwing out bits and bobs of things in our fridge because we didn't use them up quick enough? and that is money out the back door. You gain motivation from areas in your life that are going well. If things are not going well, try to look at that situation as it's temporary. If you don't like your job, view it as temporary. I'm not staying here much longer. I'm going to find a way out. If things are broken in your house and you don't know how to fix them, try to view it as temporary. It won't always be like this. You'll figure out a way to get that item fixed. Then start brainstorming those areas that you want to be temporary and try to strategize ways that you can get them taken care of. Find time for solitude. All of us need time to be able to think straight, to be able to plan, and to be productive with our planning. We need time to toss ideas around our head and make decisions. One of the most important things to start with is to determine what our spending habits are and the impact that they're having 
on our finances. It takes time to start a spending habit, but it doesn't take much time. It takes more time to stop a spending habit. That's why the coffee shops and all of the breakfast fast food do so well. Because if they can get you in there just a time or two, you've set a habit and you're probably going to continue going. But getting that habit stopped is harder. It takes courage to identify those spending habits that are pulling us down. And it takes courage to find the motivation to stop them. Identify the spending habit that you want to alter. Focus on being more conscientious when you are spending in the area that you want to alter. If it's happening because of a way that you feel like maybe you're sad, you're stressed, you're angry, identify those feelings that are leading you to that spending habit and try to work on controlling those first. And then the spending habit will be easier to control. And then take ownership of where you've spent your money. We all make our own spending choices and it takes courage to identify those and take back control. Reckless spending or bad spending when we don't have enough money to make those choices have bad results and they cause us to have more stress, which then leads to more bad spending. Every time we're in a situation, we affect it one way or the other. Are we diffusing that situation and trying to come up with other areas or other ways to get out of that situation? Or are we immediately going to that bad spending habit to comfort ourselves? Could we try to stay neutral when we look at that spending habit and think about what we would tell a friend if they were struggling in that area? A lot of it is about self-discipline, being willing to change, being willing and open to new ideas on how to do things to alter our spending or our savings. So if you are in a situation that can be changed, change it. We want to save more of our own money than what we are spending on things that we really don't have anything to show for it. There's so many areas that I've suggested over time, and some people are just not willing to change. For instance, we use bar soap instead of soft soap, and for some reason, people think that's unsanitary and don't want to change. Times that maybe we could use up that squishy potato instead of throwing it away, but people have convinced themselves that it's not good to eat a squishy potato. Some of those thought processes that have been instilled in us from I don't know where need to be altered to get ourselves back on track. Would you rather cut up a squishy potato and have fried potatoes or potato soup? Or would you rather be out of food at the end of that pay period and not be able to buy gas? Just little decisions like that along the way can help us build our wealth pay off our debt and have more disposable income and be able to handle those emergencies when we are shot with them. For instance, we've had so many unexpected emergencies lately. My water system, the electricity went out. So we were without water. We've had a repairman here day after day trying to pull roots out of our water system so that he can fix that. Our washing machine started leaking and we had to get another washing machine. My husband's van wouldn't work the other day and I had to drive him an hour one way to work and then drive an hour to another city for me to go to work and then drive back that hour to pick him up. And I know there was several more. It seems like this last week, it's just been one thing after another, and that's just three of the major ones. So life will happen, but we can cushion ourselves and comfort ourselves a little bit to know that we have been able to cut expenses in areas that are not that big of a deal, to stick back some money. So when those emergencies happen, we can pay for them and not go into debt and just make that situation even more stressful. 
So I hope that this video has been encouraging to you. Let me know what you are willing to change this week to make things easier on yourself and your expenses a bit lower. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.